1966, America accidentally dropped four nuclear bombs on Spain. A mid-air collision tore a U.S. bomber apart? Hydrogen bombs, might each 100 times more powerful than Hiroshima, plummeted toward a quiet coastal town. Three nukes slammed into the ground, one vanished into the sea. For weeks, no one knew where it was. The U.S. government covered it up. Spain was left in the dark, and for the people of Palomares, life was never the same. This is the story of the day the world nearly lost control of the apocalypse. The year is 1966. The Cold War isn't just cold, it's nuclear hot. The US and the Soviet Union are locked in a global staring contest with missiles aimed at each other's cities. Both sides know if one fires, the other fires back. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in the most dangerous game ever played. A game with no winner. Both sides had enough nuclear firepower to end humanity twice over and neither trusted the other for a second. To stay ready for that nightmare scenario, the US launched Operation Chrome Dome, a chilling plan to keep nuclear-armed bombers flying 24-7, every hour, every day, armed, fueled, and ready to strike. The B-52 Stratofortress, a flying monster built to deliver hell, but it couldn't stay airborne forever. Every mission depended on mid-air refueling, a second aircraft of the KC-135 would meet the bomber at precise times to transfer fuel while flying at 30,000 feet. It was routine, rehearsed, predictable, until January 17, 1966, when something went wrong. In a matter of seconds, seven men are dead, two planes are gone, and four thermonuclear bombs are falling toward the Spanish coast. Three hit the ground, one vanishes into the sea, and the world has no idea. Palomers didn't know it yet, but they were now ground zero for a nuclear nightmare. In the hours after the crash, American troops sealed off the fields. Men in radiation suits swept the ground. Helicopters circled overhead. But to the villagers, there was silence. No sirens, no announcements. No one told them what had really fallen from the sky. Life tried to go on. Children played near the wreckage. Farmers tended tomato fields dusted in radioactive soil. Locals washed in river water, not knowing it carried traces of plutonium. Then came the strange behavior. American soldiers refused to drink local water. They burned crops, dug up entire fields and sealed them in barrels. Spanish officials showed up in suits, whispering behind closed doors. And still, not a word to the people living there. The U.S. government downplayed everything. Publicly, they called it a minor incident. Privately, the Pirelli, they were panicking. Plutonium had spread across miles of farmland, and the missing bomb, the one in the sea, was still unaccounted for. What if the Soviets found it first? What if it detonated underwater? What if its casing broke open and poisoned the coastline? Every day that passed, the pressure mounted. And yet, the people of Palomares were kept in the dark. To this day, survivors remember the fear. Not from the crash, but from the silence. One bomb was still missing, the most dangerous one. It hadn't exploded, it hadn't been found on land. It had fallen into the sea and vanished. That bomb, a B-28 thermonuclear warhead, was now somewhere in the Mediterranean. And the clock was ticking. The U.S. launched an operation so classified, it didn't even have an official name at first. Later, it would be known as Broken Arrow, the military term for a lost nuclear weapon. They brought in Navy ships, divers, sonar. But it wasn't enough. The Mediterranean is vast, cold, and deep, especially near Palomares. The terrain is rough, full of canyons and crevices, and the bomb could have sunk straight into a trench. For days, nothing. Then weeks. Still nothing. Tensions were rising. The Soviets were watching. American commanders feared the USSR might send subs to recover the bomb themselves and gain access to US nuclear tech. So they escalated. Enter Alvin, a top secret deep sea submersible used for scientific exploration and now a nuclear rescue mission. With robotic arms and lights mounted on its nose, Alvin dove deeper than any human team could. 
pass after pass. They searched the seabed for a shape they could barely describe. Until... There it was. Half buried in sand, tangled in parachute cords, lying at the edge of a deep underwater canyon. They'd found it. But recovering it. That would take another month. Battling currents, malfunctioning equipment, and constant fear that the bomb could detonate if handled wrong. Finally, on April 7th, nearly three months after the crash, the bomb was raised from the sea and brought aboard the USS Petrel. The world never knew how close we came. One wrong move, one hard landing, and the Mediterranean could have become the site of the first underwater nuclear detonation in history. And yet, the real damage that was already happening back on land. Once the missing bomb was found, the US had a new problem. The land was poisoned. The crash hadn't caused a nuclear explosion, but two of the bombs had ruptured on impact. Their conventional explosives blew plutonium into the air, over fields, roads, homes, and people. And plutonium doesn't just disappear, it sticks. It spreads. It kills, slowly. The US launched a massive operation with a quiet name, Project Indelo. Later, it became known as something far more honest, Operation Dirt Sweep. American troops swept the countryside with Geiger counters. Radiation maps were drawn in secret. They dug up topsoil, truckload after truckload, and sealed it in drums. More than 1,400 tons of radioactive earth were scraped from the Spanish countryside, loaded onto ships, and sent all the way to a nuclear waste facility in South Carolina. But they didn't get it all. Some areas were too hard to access. Some materials were washed with water and left behind. Some readings were never shared with the public at all. And through it all, villagers stayed in Palomares. They were never evacuated. They were told not to worry. And when reporters asked questions, the official line was, no danger, no problem. But the danger was real. The people who lived near the crash sites were exposed for weeks, sometimes months, before the cleanup even began. Even after the soil was gone, the stigma remained. Tourists stopped coming. Tomatoes from Palomares were called radioactive. Land values collapsed, cancers spiked. And while the US quietly cleaned its mess, it never officially apologized. The bombs were gone. The crash sites cleared. The contaminated soil shipped halfway around the world. But for the people of Palomares, the nightmare wasn't over. There was no apology. No admission of guilt. No compensation. Not then. The official story? The situation is under control. That's what US and Spanish officials told the world. Behind closed doors, the Spanish government was furious, but they were trapped. Francisco Franco's dictatorship relied on U.S. military and economic support, so Spain kept quiet. Instead of protests, there was a photo op. To prove everything was fine, U.S. Ambassador Angier Biddle Duke and Spanish Minister Manuel Fraga stripped down to their swim trunks and posed for the cameras in the Mediterranean Sea, smiling and splashing near the crash zone. It was meant to calm the public, to show that the water and the U.S.-Spain alliance were safe. But the people of Palomares weren't smiling. Their farms were still under radiation monitoring. Their health concerns were ignored, and many never received proper medical evaluations. Decades passed, and then, slowly, the truth began to surface. In the 1990s, declassified U.S. documents confirmed what locals suspected all along. Radiation levels had been dangerously high, Plutonium had spread farther than originally reported, and cleanup was never fully completed. Even today, radioactive particles still remain in parts of Palomares. Spain continues to push the US to remove the rest of the contaminated soil, over 50 years later. In 2015, both countries agreed to finish the job. The U.S. has finally agreed to remove soil contaminated with radioactivity in the southern Spanish town of Palomares. You might be thinking, why is the U.S. helping clean up nuclear waste all the way in Spain? Well, the answer is simple. We're the reason it's there in the first place, Jose. But as of now, that promise remains unfulfilled. No one was ever held accountable. No one paid a price. 
and the villagers of Palomares are still waiting. Palomares wasn't a freak accident, it was part of a pattern. The US military has confirmed at least 32 broken arrows, incidents where nuclear weapons were accidentally dropped, lost, or damaged. Some of those bombs were never recovered. The most dangerous weapons on Earth vanished, covered up, forgotten by most, but not by the people who lived near them. Palomares was one of the worst, but it wasn't the only time we got close to disaster, and it won't be the last, because even now, nuclear weapons are still being transported, still loaded, still flown. There are nukes on submarines, nukes in underground silos, nukes in planes flying across the sky, right now. And here's the question nobody wants to ask. What happens the next time something goes wrong? Will we even know? Palomares taught us something, not just about nuclear weapons, but about silence. The most powerful nations on Earth don't always tell the truth, not even when the fallout lands on someone else's front door. So when you hear officials say, everything is under control, maybe it is, but maybe, just maybe, they said the same thing in Spain. <laughs>